Dave Eggers' non-fiction book Zaytoun was released in 2009. It depicts the story of Abdul Rahman Zaytoun, a Syrian-American businessman in New Orleans who owns a painting and contracting firm. Zaytoun takes place in New Orleans, Louisiana, and starts with the main character, Abdul Rahman Zaytoun, and his wife, Kathy, getting ready to send their three kids to school. The couple have their disagreements, with Kathy becoming more irritated by Zaytoun's insistence on every issue, but it is evident that they are much in love. Zaytoun sets off for the day's tasks. In addition to running his own painting and contracting company, he also looks after a number of rental houses all around the metropolis. Kathy manages the company's paperwork and takes phone calls while working from home. As is typical for them, the couple is in frequent communication throughout the day to address business and other issues. Kathy then starts hearing about an oncoming storm. Because storms are prevalent in the New Orleans region, she doesn't think much of it at first, but the news becomes worse as the day goes on. Zaytoun keeps ignoring it though, even after his brother Ahmed in Spain calls him on the phone. Zaytoun was raised in a large family in Jabla, a seaside town in Syria. After a near-death experience, his father had chosen to settle down, after his career as a captain. Despite this, both Ahmed and Zaytoun would one day become sailors in their own right. Before finally settling down in Baton Rouge, Zaytoun would sail the world for close to a decade aboard several ships, being introduced to Kathy by his friend Ahmad. Kathy was raised in a Southern Baptist home in Baton Rouge and had a close friend called Yuko, who married Ahmad after she converted to Islam. Kathy was attracted to Yuko's sense of calm and serenity after her previous marriage had ended in divorce. She became interested in Islam after being disillusioned with the speaker at her evangelical church. Kathy converted to Islam and married Zaytoun, a devoted Muslim who was becoming dedicated to his newfound nation. By the end of the day, Kathy hears of a family lost at sea due to the storm. The following morning, she chooses to take their children out of the city to wait out the storm, following the governor and mayor's suggestions while Zaytoun refuses to accompany her. He's preoccupied with work, and he wants to make sure all the building sites and rental houses he's responsible for are okay. In the beginning, it seems that he was correct, as Kathy gets stranded for hours on the highway on her route to her sister's home. Over the course of the weekend, the storm passes. It's strong, but nothing unusual. By Tuesday, the levees holding back the water are broken, and flooding engulfs the city. Zaytoun's home is submerged by the afternoon. As Zaytoun finishes packing up what he can fit on the second level, he hops in an ancient canoe he purchased from a customer because it reminded him of his days at sea. In order to get Kathy and her children to Phoenix, Kathy contacts her friend Yuko, whose husband Ahmad takes them there. While Kathy continues to plead with Zaytoun to leave the city, Zaytoun has found meaning and purpose in the town. There were some elderly couples and a lady stranded in their flooded houses who were saved by him. He brings food and water to others and feeds caged dogs. He partners with Todd Gambino and Syrian emigrant Nasser Daoud. He calls Kathy every day from Claiborne, where there is a functional phone and where the three guys meet a fourth, Ronnie. Kathy tells Zaytoun the city is brutal and chaotic, with murders, rapes, and gangs. In actuality, Zaytoun is overwhelmed by civilians seeking rescue, and troops and police in full battle gear. On the morning of September 6, Zaytoun had just finished speaking with his brother Ahmed and was going to phone Kathy from his Claiborne Street home when a swarm of police and military personnel barged in. They refused to listen to Zaytoun's claims that he is the rightful owner of the home and force the four men onto their boat. They're transferred to a staging area, then to a railway and bus terminal, afterward known as Camp Greyhound, which has been turned into a jail for the duration of the storm. 
All of the men are denied phone calls or access to a council, and Zaytun is even made to undergo invasive body examinations without knowing what accusations he faces. Several signs lead him to believe that the police suspect them of terrorist activity. It doesn't help that Todd is carrying MapQuest printouts and a memory chip in his pocket, while NASA is carrying his life savings, $10,000 in cash. For many days, the guys are held in an unpleasant outdoor cell, where they are subjected to police pepper spraying and practically every meal contains ham or pork, which NASA and Zaytun are unable to consume since they are Muslims. When they're transferred to Hunt Correctional Facility in St. Gabriel, a real jail, none of the Katrina convicts are granted due process. In the beginning, Zaytun was kept in the same cell as NASA, but he was eventually separated from him. He attempts for a month to contact the outside world, let Kathy know he's alive, and challenge his confinement. Kathy, on the other hand, is becoming more and more agitated each day, also having to deal with the concerns of Zaytun's relatives. Kathy realizes Zaytun may have died despite Yuko's consolation. When Zaytun's cell phone rings at the end of September, it's from a missionary who claims to have seen him in jail and is phoning to say he's well. She also receives a call from Homeland Security, informing her that the agency no longer has interest in her husband. As soon as Kathy hears of Zaytun's arrest, she quickly phones her lawyer, Rally Olmeyer, but it takes weeks for him to be freed. Zaytun's excellent character must be proven in court so Kathy must first travel back and collect witnesses. The hearing is then cancelled, and she must travel to New Orleans to acquire proof of property ownership to post bail for her husband. At long last, the two are reunited, and after spending a few days with friends, they begin to gently transition back into regular life. The couple starts to buy houses in their neighborhood to fix up and sell. By autumn 2008, they're back in their former house and working, but much has changed. Post-traumatic stress disorder is causing Kathy to become agitated and forgetful. Zaytun tries to think of his situation as a test from God, but he's disappointed in his nation and frustrated that so many refused to see him as a person. The only way he knows how to cope with his emotional issues is to put his whole heart and soul into his profession. Despite this, both Kathy and Zaytun are confident that they will be able to continue their healing and move forward. If you have any suggestions of which books I should summarize, please let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.